Hello and welcome to this video tutorial where we will use the JS Scheduler to create a web page with MySQL backend. We will use PHP to record actions that users perform on the calendar into a table in the database. For the development of this sample, we have installed XAMPP. Then we have downloaded the calendar sample from MindFusion's website and unzipped it in Drive D. Now let's copy the calendar folder into the website folder of the Apache web server, which is called htdocs. Now if we load the index.html file from the calendar folder, we will be able to see the JavaScript calendar in action. Here it is. Let's create a sample appointment. If we refresh the page, the appointment is gone. What we'll do in this sample is bind the calendar to a DB table, where each appointment shall be stored. Here you can see the index.html file inside the calendar folder. Let's get to the PHP MyAdmin portal, and there we'll create a new database. We'll call it Calendar. No, we'd better call it Events, because it will store the calendar events. In the calendar sample is the SQL file, which stores the SQL command needed to create the required table. We'll import that file into our new events database. Here we go. Let's execute the script. Now our events DB has a new table called data. Data has all columns needed for recording an appointment. Let's get back to the PHP Admin Start page and create a user that will have the rights to record the calendar events. We create a new user whose host will be localhost and with a simple password 123. Then we give that user all privileges and save them. Then we'll have to edit the login information in the server PHP file. We open that file, and at the beginning we see the connection string. There, we edit the username with our user MindFusion, the password and the name of the database. Let's look at this PHP file. It has several methods in it. Get, which reads the database data, Add, which inserts new event records into the database, and delete. These methods are called by the calendar event handlers, as we'll see in a moment. Let's look at the JavaScript code of our calendar. We navigate to the JS folder of the calendar directory. There, in the app subfolder, are two JavaScript files. These are two short files. Let's look at them. The first one is calendar, where a single method called load from json is defined. In this method, we parse a json string and assign the info to calendar items. The fields that are assigned to each item match the columns in the data db table. Then we add the newly created items to the items collection of the calendar schedule and repaint the control. The server file defines methods that make x, m, l, h, t, t, p request that communicate with the PHP calendar server we've looked at earlier. The methods send commands and messages in plain text with details used by the commands. This way, the add item method, for example, sends an add command and a message with all necessary data for the new item. If we go back to the server.php file, 
we will see that the functions there use the message data to initialize database commands that handle the provided data according to the given command, add, delete, or get. How are those commands bound to user actions on the calendar? Let's look at main.js. There, as you can see, we first load all calendar items from the database. Then we bind the item created and item deleted events to methods that call server.addItem and deleteItem methods. When the JS server method is called, it builds the required command string and message and sends them to the PHP server file for further handling. Finally, the PHP server file makes the correct SQL statement to the database with the provided data. Let's see how this works. We create an appointment and use the Options button to edit the start and end hour of the event. Let's say it lasts from 10 to 11 a.m. We refresh the page. Our appointment is there, saved in the database. Let's create another one, this time for several days. Let's make it from the 18th to the 21st. Let's refresh the page. Here it is. With that, our tutorial is finished. Thank you for watching, and thank you for your interest in MindFusion developer tools.